what languages do you think are the easiest to learn first starting if your if your native tongue is english yeah that's a great question so actually the us military has ranked the most spoken languages in the world into five different sectors if you look this up on google images you look up like us military ranking for foreign languages and it shows five different categories and how difficult in other words, how many hours would it take the average American speaker or English speaker to be able to learn that language? And in category one, you have languages like Dutch, Spanish, French, Danish, Norwegian, Swedish. So a lot of Indo-European languages that also have romantic or Germanic roots. Okay. So that's why I think Spanish is a good language to start with, also because it's spoken by so many people here in the U.S. French is also good. There's a lot of French speakers in Africa. makes it a useful language. Other languages, though, like Swedish, Norwegian, and Dutch, Everyone in those countries, in Holland, Sweden, and Norway, they probably speak English pretty well if they're under the age of 50, so it's not the most useful. Okay. But there's definitely some languages that are quite useful. Um, Chinese and Arabic are very useful languages as well, but they're a lot harder to learn, and I think both of those are in Category 5, which takes around... 2,200 hours, I think. That's crazy. Not mistaken. 22 so. hours of just straight... 2,200. 2,200 yeah, hours yeah. of just sitting down straight looking at all the words, all the characters. Yeah, I mean, there's different ways to learn languages. It doesn't have to be just that way. You can watch shows, you can listen to music, podcasts. We're going to get more into that later. But yeah, you got to spend a good amount of time to get those languages down. And uh, I'd like to know, like, what exactly is the structure of a language? What makes up a language? Great question. So any way that two humans are able to communicate with each other, usually through spoken interactions, written interactions, even sometimes, you know, motion interactions like sign language, that would be considered a language. Even okay. animals have language and they just communicate like with clicks and whistles and that kind of stuff. So languages differ from species to species. species. However, a typical language will have nouns, which are people, places, and things, verbs, which is action words, adjectives, which describe nouns, adverbs, which describe verbs. And then after that, it gets a little bit more interesting because some languages have gender and plurality. As you know, Spanish and Portuguese and Italian have those. Other languages have cases. German is a language that has four cases. Greek and Russian have like six and seven cases, I believe. And that just makes it more complicated. So different languages have different structures. Um, if you look at Chinese or Thai, that's a tonal language. So if you say kap kun ka versus kap kun ka or kap kun ka, that depends if your tone is rising, staying the same, or going down. Wow. So in Chinese, you might say like the same word four different ways with different tone and accent, and it has four different meanings. That's so, crazy. Not something that we have to worry about in English that much. Yeah, I mean, well, we have other things like... Same word meaning the homonyms. Yeah, homonyms. Yeah. We have tons and of those. just the way that we pronounce our vowels too. The fact have you seen that mug that says like English is hard but it can be understood through tough, thorough, something else it has like the words tough, thorough, thought, and all the words that are spelled similarly, but they all have different pronunciation. Yeah. Sometimes a GH is like back of the throat, sometimes like an F sound. And I teach like people from Brazil and Spain and France how to speak English. They're like, Why? Why is it this way? I'm sorry. English we is weird. <laughs> That's just how, how you have to learn it.